What's up everyone? Hope you're doing well today. We are jumping into some more bedtime baseball relaxing ranked and we are sitting at 859. So we're close to World Series, not quite there yet. And it looks like we're going to be the away team for this game. It's a Bob Gibson versus Chris Sale matchup. We've both got Prestige Tatis in the leadoff spot. I've got Yelich, Mantle, Trout, Thames, Jose Ramirez, Grandal, Correa. He's got Mantle, Ruth, Castellanos, Bellinger, Rollins, his created player, and Ryan Sandberg, Prestige, in the eight spot, and another Major League Park. And after, I think this might be the seventh attempt at getting a matchup, we are finally going to be playing a baseball game. If this is the first time that you've been watching a bedtime baseball video, we're going to get progressively quieter, slower, softer as the game goes on. So enjoy, sit back, relax if you're at work. Tuck in those blankets if you're falling asleep. And enjoy. Major League Baseball parks are the one place where I'll ask for a friendly, but with that many attempts at trying to find a game, we're just going to have to deal with it. Bob Gibson, a new free card to 99 in the game. After his recent passing, may he rest in peace. And actually a pretty good card. I've used him a couple times. Happy with the way he started. We'll see how long that lasts, but we get a nice little base hit up the middle with the Mickey Mantle here in the first on an 0-2 pitch with two outs. Perfect, perfect from Mike Trout's going to go to right center. We're going to get first and third now with a two out. And the number five hole hitter, Eric Thames, coming up to hit. We get a 1-2 pitch after being late on a fastball. Goes back with the curve. We managed to check it up. Let's see if he goes off speed again. I actually swung at that pitch. We're not going to talk about it though. He goes fastball sinker. Sorry, curveball sinker. I forgot to send the runner and it should be first and third. But we do bring home a run on a little chopper on a bad swing. Bringing up Jose Ramirez. I'm trying really hard to get out in front of the ball because I know in a major league park, Anything can happen on these swings, so I'm trying my best to make sure that I get out in front and not get jammed on these fastballs. But now we're way out in front of the off speed. Another perfect, perfect swing. This time with Jose Ramirez is going to be just an easy ground out right to the second baseman, but we put up a run, had some really good swings, and we are going into the bottom of the first for a sail on the mound. First batter, we get strike three, and a lot of people, they don't love Chris Sale because of his pitch selection. The one thing I like about Sale is that I hit his analog very consistently. He's one of the few people in this game that I feel like I can actually hit my spots more often than not. Mickey Mantle's going to pop it up to the catcher. And behind the dish today, we have Yasmani Grandal. I hope that Grandal is good for me because... He, to me, feels like he has the makings of a endgame catcher. Just because of how glitchy his swing usually is. And this might be one of the best versions that we've seen of him. Last year, Grandal had a very good card as well. But with Vision being such a big factor, he was hard to use above All-Star. At least for me personally. We've thrown a couple dots on two strikes. And he's fouled off both of them. One here with Ruth, one with Tatis earlier. Takes the slider away. And also takes strike three. That's exactly what we wanted there. And we get out of the first inning with a no harm done. Carlos Correa in his Diamond Dynasty debut for me. His first two cards were very good for me. Really good with the face of franchise. Pretty good with the player of the month. I don't know that he's the answer for me at second base. I'm kind of going with Robinson Cano and switching some people out based off of platoon options. But for now, we're going to use Carlos Correa. Platoon early here in the game. He's going to take out Bellinger and put in Gary Sheffield. I'm assuming Bellinger was playing an outfield position. But we know Gary also plays third base. That ball started in the right Handed, or the left-handed batter's box and managed to be inside off the plate. Ball, then again, every everything from Chris Hale starts in the left-handed batter's box. One pitch that I like with Chris Hale is the two-seamer. 
However, in a major league park where I can tell this guy's jumping out at the four seam, a two seam's not going to be a great option for most of this game. If he catches up to the four seam, we'll throw it. But we're going to avoid it for now because he might be just late enough on a four seam that he catches up to the two seam. A little shank shot from Fernando Tatis is going to get him on base to lead off the top of the third inning. After a walk to Mickey, we now have Mike Trout in the four spot. We got a perfect, perfect last time up. I'm kind of looking for a slider low and away here. Got the curveball. Now he's gotten four seam after the curveball a few times. Let's see what he's got planned. He does go four seam, but it's low off the plate. Big spot for Trout batting 441 so far. Looking for it, got it underneath it. Another full count coming up. Speed on the bases. We're gonna we're gonna be stealing here. All over the ball and just foul. Think he's a little nervous. And he gets a ground ball to third base, I believe. He may have thought that he played that on a line without it hitting the ground. I think that's what he's expecting there. I think he might even go back and look at the replay. Uh, okay. Well, that ends the ball game. We're going to take a W. We're now at 875. So after trying to get seven matchups, I don't know if that was a mental mistake or if he just, <laughs> he was just done. He was just done. I think what that means is we need to go back into another ranked seasons game. We're going to be going with Corey Kluber in this one. He's got prestige Hershiser. I had the option of either Corbin Burns or Corey Kluber, but Corbin Burns is already a pitcher with low stamina. We're going to go with Corey Kluber, see what he's able to give us. And more than likely, we're going to see a Kenley Jansen debut in this game. A ship it game at night. That means there's going to be a lot of offense. So I'm still surprised about my opponent quitting so easily there. But here we're going to start off with a sinker right down the middle, shot up the gap, and we're going to get two out of this one on the very first pitch of the game. We're going to be denying a friendly here. Because how many people have already backed out or requested friendly quits? And friendly quit karma is a real thing, but he's already thrown a pitch. We've already gotten a guy on base. So friendly quit karma has thereby been nullified. Really good cutter there from Hershizer. He's going to get me out. So after a leadoff double, nothing doing. This new Mondesi card is interesting. Really good, obviously perfect against lefties. Flawed against righties, but... His cards are always glitchy. Doesn't matter what kind of power numbers they have, they still hit diggers. Wanted that pitch to be more away than high, and it didn't end up getting there. Already, I have no control of my pitches with Kluber. They're just going everywhere. Really nice take by him. I'm going to try to get a front door cutter. I have a feeling ball four is incoming. So far, we've more or less predicted a home run and a walk. And I think we're getting a double play. First pitch that we've got wrong so far. We were one batter too early with the double play prediction, but we do get it from Babe Ruth. We only go up the one run on the solo shot to lead off the game. Jose Ramirez has not impressed me so far. But we're going to give him more opportunities because I do like his swing. I, I liked his previous card. Didn't use him too much. But I think he's got one of the quicker swings in the game. And that's always very important to me. Perfect, perfect the other way. And he's got the auto shift on. So we're going to get two out of this one on a 1-2 pitch. Rontal is all over that changeup, but it is going to go very far, but very foul. 
Incredible diving play from Babe Ruth at first base. Going to keep the runner at third. I've got the pitcher on deck. Let's see what he tries to do to Carlos Correa. He is going to go for the intentional walk. And Corey Kluber will come up with runners on the corners and two out. Chopper to the shortstop. Mondesi diamond fielding over there. He is going to throw on to first for the out. And after we threaten, we're not able to do much. Control issues coming back. We dotted up the first couple pitches and then three straight misses make it four slowly hit up the middle nice flip from fernando tatis he gets the out at second base which was very close not quite at first base but that's okay we at least got one now o2 to larry walker we had the last batter o2 as well and walked him Early on some pitches inside. Let's throw one away. And he is ready to swing at those pitches. Ray's got a strong arm. I felt confident going to second base with that one. But once again, only get the one out. Tatis batting in the eighth spot, but batting 433. So it's definitely not for the reason that he's doing poorly with him. Probably just trying to set up his pitcher with some speed. But the pitcher's going to be leading off for him next inning. We get the pop out, and my Tatis, the leadoff man, is up first. Nice cutter on the front door. Threw a lot of sinkers the first time through the lineup, and now come in with a couple of cutters the second time through. Yelich barely missed that one. Gonna pop out high to right field, and already two down. And a hard hit ball by Mickey Mandel is going to end the inning. When we've missed, it's been just by a little bit. I'm feeling confident going into the next six innings. And I've noticed he's thrown his off speed right over the middle of the plate a few times. I'm going to be looking a little bit more right down the middle. As we get a nice little line out to left field there. Left center. Once again, the auto shift taking away another base hit. But we're going to be looking mostly middle because his sinkers have been in good spots and his cutters have been in good spots. And that might be the first good curveball that he's thrown. Another bad curveball. This one hangs over the plate and somehow gets away with it. Tatis has got to make a play and he does. The slow roller, 85 speed and still gets the job done. Another opportunity for Fernando Tatis up the middle. Makes another good play, and we are out of the inning. After some really tough control to start the game, Corey Kluber has been locking it down. I will also say in the last three innings, I've had better swings overall than my opponent has. So it's only a matter of time until they turn around. Yep. Now it's time to get relaxed. It's bedtime baseball for a reason. We've already played around nine innings so far today. And now it's time to relax, sit back, get into the groove, not just for the viewers, but for me playing this game. We are trying too hard early on. Now it's relaxation mode. Trout gliding over to make the catch in center field. We got one out. Now he's got the pitcher spot. Interesting. He wants to make a move. He's locked me down. I don't think he's going to do anything here, but we got to keep an eye out for any kind of movement at first. No play there. Tatis gets the ball in the hole, makes the easy one. Looked like J-Ram's feet were stuck in the mud there. The ball was not hit hard whatsoever. But he wasn't able to get to it. Opportunity for a play at home. He is going to be holding his man up. And we got an opportunity for a play at the plate. And he is going to be out. 
I accidentally hit the R1 button. It was almost disaster. He almost made it in a second, almost ended up scoring. But uh, let's just pretend like we did that on purpose. And with Tatis making all the plays at short today, let's see what he's got with the bat. Another perfect, perfect out. It was a good pitch, so I can't complain. He's still hanging those off-speed pitches. That's what I got to pay attention for. There's another perfect, perfect up the middle. This time with two outs in the inning. Trying to get a little elite blue pit to the right side. It's not going to happen. Three good swings in the inning. And nothing going on. We can't let that get to us. We're here to relax. The swings are flowing. The man on the mound is dealing. We just got to stay close. Somehow making contact. Breathe. Yeah, okay, that's fair. We deserve that one. One thing we've been doing in the later stage of this game is getting ahead of hitters. Early on, we couldn't get a feel for the release point. But now we're getting ahead, staying ahead. Hard line drive to right field. I'm okay with that. I took a risk. Thought we could make a play. It's not going to happen. The difference is it does put a runner in scoring position, whereas he should have been at first base. But if he hits a home run, it doesn't matter, right? And if he pops out, it doesn't matter. It was a deep fly out. But 78 pitches for Kluber. His spot may come up in this inning, but if it does, it's more than likely after we've either scored a couple runs or with a couple runners on, so... I think the decision will be made for us. We have been smoking the baseball, thankfully, off the top of the wall. I thought that was going to get caught once again, but here we are. Runner at second, Zen mode. Change up, slide step, fouled off. J-Ram all over this baseball. We're going to tie up this ball game. Uh, made him jump the gun on that one. <laughs> Absolute pain. Remember how we said we were Zen a second ago? This is some next level pain. Interestingly, he does have the pitcher spot up fourth. Gets on top of the... Not a good animation. Save at first base. We did a video the other day about how after you get to 75% of a pitcher's stamina, that's when things start to fall off very quickly for the pitchers. Kluber is approaching that very quickly. Swing and a miss. We get the strikeout. Now the pitcher spot is up. Looks like he's going to be taking him out. He knows I've been hitting him decently well recently. Tomei's coming in. Ooh, now he's getting it himself as well. I, I don't know that it's necessarily evened out, but he's getting his fair share of lineouts. Hard hit from Carlos Correa up the middle, leading it off for the pitcher spot up next, so it's going to be very interesting. With Marion on the mound, I think we're going to be going with Jim Tomey as well. I got my prestige version. One of the few cards that I have prestige this year. He does not have prestige Mariano Rivera. And keep in mind, I am likely to bring in Kenley Jansen in the bottom of the eighth for his debut as well. Smoked a couple of sinkers so far. I expect to see a cutter. Let's see if he hangs it. Goes with a changeup, and we softly, softly guide it through the right side. Do we have the poise to get this done? Goes for another cutter. I believe we hit a changeup to get on with Jim. We were all over it. Missed it by that much. We're going to 
has the arm at third base. Gets it there on a bounce or two. Now the tying runs at third. Double play ends the inning. And we get a little help on the check swing there. Oh, baby. Fritz Jin Yelich. After all that, must have been four or five perfect perfects in that game. This one results in a three-run homer late. So as soon as he takes out Hershizer, gives up a big swing. Very quick strike. Now the rest of this game is just going to be about staying composed, focus, putting up maybe a couple more runs. We got four outs to work with on our side, six for him. I'd love to get at least one more. Hard hit from Trout, another bunt defense there on two strikes. And it's time for the debut of Hanley Jansen. Wow. I didn't even expect that ball to drop that far. It ended up being right on the corner. And I thought it was much higher. What I've heard about Jansen is that he's pretty good. Nothing crazy special. But he just needs to be good enough. I don't anticipate on using him as my closer long term. But if he could get me the seventh inning as a setup man, that would be amazing. Today we're using him in the eighth. Already putting the tying run to the plate. Walking the leadoff man that never, ever, ever ends well. My opponent was really patient early in the game. The first couple innings, very patient, took his walks, didn't chase. And then from the middle of the game, he started being very impatient. Another hard hit ball from him. It's going to be another out. I'm going to throw back to first just for fun. Might have been just late on that one. Late side of good. What I like about the Kenley card is that he's got good walks per nine, good control. Not a lot of relief pitchers have that. And that's one of the reasons why I have the Emilio Pagan card in my bullpen as well. I don't think I'm going to use him in this game unless we go to extras. But I like those walks per nine. Tying run is on base. It might be time for a new pitcher. Valdez is coming in. Kenley walks two in his debut. Babe Ruth staying in the game. The one advantage about Valdez is that most people haven't seen him much. And uh, that's about it. Now we got him looking inside. We got him looking outside. Oh, yes. We got to get one more. It's not over yet. Looks like a Jim Edmond stance on his created player. Trying to get the strikeout here. He goes the other way with it. Did a few foul balls this inning. Nice block from Grandal. Coming in with the sinker, taps it to the catcher. Grandal's all over it. Throw to first. And Valdez is able to get out of the jam. We got top of the ninth. We got our three run homer last time. He's bringing in Chapman. My closer is Raleigh Fingers. He hit a curveball that didn't go anywhere. He was all over it. Now he's 0-2. This man's been slide-stepping all over the place. And still struggling with Grandal. That's going to be a fly out to right field. No insurance runs for us tonight. We got to lock it down. Now this is what bedtime baseball is all about. An intense situation. We got the tying run on deck. Safe situation for Raleigh Fingers. It is ship it ballpark. The ball absolutely flies. This is definitely the most high scoring ballpark in the game. This ball game is not over. He swings at the 2-0 pitch. Inside must have been looking slider. When he saw the break on that ball and it's going to be first out. 0-2 oh, pitch now to Larry Walker. He's crushed a couple pitches earlier in the game with him. 
Got him down one and two. Great take. Elite take right there. Fingers had the dot. We had the pitch release. It was perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Got to stay composed. And he swings and misses at strike three. One to go. We talked about Tatis in the eight spot earlier. Not because he's bad. Still batting well over 400 with him. All over this baseball. It's a one run game. Inch hitter's going to get an opportunity. He stayed on that slider. Credit to him. That was a great swing. Threw the pitch pretty much exactly where I wanted it. Yelich is coming in. We've got Chapman available. We know that he's going to have a matchup move as well off the bench. So there's no reason to stay away. To go away from Raleigh here. <laughs> and after 26 outs, we throw the fattest pitch of the game. Tapper to Grandal. Remember how I said we weren't going to throw Emilio Pagan in this game? Unless we got to extra innings. I think Pagan's going to be making his debut. Very, very strange swing on that one. Josh Naylor coming in. This might be his ranked debut. I'm not sure if I've pinched hit with him yet. This might be it. I think he has a very quick swing as well. But look how small that green zone is. That's what concerns me about him. Although I, I think when hitters are short like this, and they have small green zones, I think they get rewarded more often. Good pitch. Tatis is up. There we go. You get your little early home run. Push that ball out in front before it breaks, I guess. We got a two-run lead here in the top of the 10th. Yelich, the hero from earlier. A late swing to right center. We got to get one more. He's already shown that he can get two in one inning. We got to get one more. The big man, Mickey Mantle. Nope. We're going to go to the bottom of the 10th. Very quickly, we did put up two. But this is where we have to lock it down. Now, I could go to Chapman, but I've been more and more skeptical of him lately. I've been having a really hard time controlling him. Pagan's a popular BR card. At least his live series is. And I've always been bad with him. Get away with a probably a good good on that swing. Possibly a perfect. Let's slow it down. I'm speaking too quickly now. That means that means I'm not focused. That means I'm throwing too quickly. Opposite field bomb. He gets a little perfect, perfect on that one. Big break on that cutter. Tying run is uh, on first base. We get a little jam to right center. Gonna make the play out there. And we got Jimmy Fox. Is he gonna pinch hit here? Maybe pinch run. It's going to a lefty. It's going to Ty Cobb. We got two lefties coming up in a row. I don't know what the decision is here. Oh, I'm gonna so regret this. You think he's going to a righty, which I'm actually okay with. He's going to Buster Posey. I feel like I've given up a home a walk-off home run to Posey very recently. One and one. It is nervous time. Not what I wanted to throw. Ended up being a decent pitch there. I just don't want to hang her. Good take. Good take. Oh, strike three called. Oh man, I couldn't. I couldn't contain myself. I apologize for the outburst. 
but that ball clips the inside corner. That was a, that was a really good game. That was just an excellent ball game. A lot of lineups on both sides. My gaming and winning home run early cutter away. That's okay though. We are gonna end the night at World Series. <laughs> it was a World Series game apparently. Uh, he was at 965, which makes sense. Makes sense why he was so early on certain pitches. He's probably even playing on Legend. And uh, we'll take a World Series game. Let's go ahead and open that World Series pack. And uh, I guess it is going to be Albert Pujols. Heard some interesting things about that card, but none of these other ones really interest me. So we'll go ahead and take him. I guess we're debuting Albert Pujols on stream tomorrow then. Well, I'd say that is about as eventful as a bedtime baseball relaxing ranked video can be. If you like this kind of video, drop a like, subscribe for more. Hoping to put out one of these every week. We also do tips videos when possible. And I'm going to mess around with a few different background sounds. We've done fire and rain in the previous videos. And I'm going to do uh, some music, some relaxing music in the back of this one and kind of flip through a few different things. So keep an eye out for that. I appreciate you watching. I hope you had a good time. Good night if you're falling asleep. Hopefully your heart rate has gone down after an exciting game. I will see you guys next time. Peace.